Hey guys, Yoshi here. Welcome back to another video. Today's video, I wanna break down Craig John Ziegard. He's one of the best grapplers between medium heavy and heavyweight divisions. There's been so many ways to attack from his guard, especially everything starting from Ziegard. So, in this video, I'm going to break down how he gets into the Ziegard and how he plays. Also, some major attacks from Ziggard. All right, let's start with the entry in terms of setting up the Ziggard. And most of the time, like starting from opponents on their feet, like standing up like this. Then Craig Jones, right after the, maybe the guard pole was sitting down on the floor like this, this is gonna be the situation first we need to expect. Then it seems like he likes to play the weaker side for the opponent they don't get used to. Like over 80% of people like to play half guard on this side. That's why naturally we engage in this side like this. But it seems like Craig Jones make it a little uh, tricky. It's like playing the other side. And there's been two ways to make it happen, like playing the weaker side of the opponent. So taking the partner's right leg. Then like he's shown like a video, he does something like this, like lying down and make a hook here. Once it's down, it's gonna be difficult for him to go to the other side. This is more like I keeping him on my left side. That's the side that like Craig wants to play. So this, by the time it goes like this, now it's like an opening frame. Like most of the guys want to start a pressure pass. So for that movement, Craig wants to get this leg in. Now he sets a knee shield zig out like this. Then after that, he keeps it here or making a reverse tail heaver. Then there's the other way. The point is more like coming, you know, initiating to the other side. That's gonna be a little tough to do this one. So in that case, Craig wants to grab a person's heel, like this, like playing De La Heaver, like this. Then if there is a space here, Craig wants to start like entanglement strike like this. But most of the time, opponent wants to slow the game down. That's why coming to pressure, like, then it's the same thing. The mission is on like this. So after that, he's going to tack his leg in to start like this. He needs to get his opponent knees on the mat. Maybe let's try this one. So this side, under the pressure, the knee is getting closer to the floor, but it's a bit more. So in this case, Clay likes to do shin to shin, like making a frame, they get this leg in, they shoot it off. This is pretty similar to Adam Wazinski, he plays butterfly guard. Once that happens, he can play like this. Then if the leg is up like this, he can easily get into leg entanglements like this. Get the top leg. There's been several ways. So this one, it's kind of like a really classic way he likes to play. It used to be called knee shield, but he used it as zigal. So like using shin against the under upper body like this. So it's really most balanced position, like creating a space easily like this. Especially against the pressure passes. In order for him to create a space, he uses it like this. Then later on, if he can find a space like this, he can switch to the other position, like a lot of arm attacks or switching the leg attacks like that. So using the shin against the upper body. Okay, the next one is more like making you lower than the last one, like using the kneecap against the hips, like hip bone like this. Then like connect, connecting the feet together like this. It's been similar to Kyle Teher, he uses a knee shield like this. This is like a closed zigger or knee shield. It's really tight to lock in a person's lower body like this. Then once it goes, it's much easier to get a person's hips away from you guys like this. Then this is gonna be like a great corner wrestling against your person's upper body. You can use your hands like making the frames or keeping the hand away like this. I'm gonna explain later. Then another one is more like a making a deep Z guard, like using a shin, shin shield like this. This is more focusing on controlling a person's hips. This one, sometimes, the last one, sometimes may not be good enough to do. That's why Craig sometimes uses the shin to completely lock the ball side of his hips from person's abdominal line, like this. 
then it's going to be much easier to get an upper body free from the opponent. Because this type of situation, my chest is pointed this way. So opponent is going to be really difficult to make chest on chest with using a really deep knee shield. Next one is how to use the bottom leg. There's been two to three ways he uses. Like one major way is this, like making a butterfly hook. Can you get your hips up? Like this one. That's a bit of the flexibility. That's why some people may find it difficult. But Craig, he's really flexible. And that's why he can easily open the knee to make a hook like this. This is a great way to stay connected, plus creating a mobility. Later on, I'm going to show you that. It's going to be pretty easy to get inversion, as it's really shallow, like just only using a hook against your partner's leg. That means like less of a part of the leg is free, easy to move it away somewhere else. Okay, the second one is my like, our knee on knee lock, very tight lock. So like placing the knee behind the knee, then lots of space here. Usually this has been used a lot with the knee shield like this, this one. It's kind of much easier to connect the feet together like this way or this way. Seems like Clegg used a lot in order to control patterns lower body like this. Then third one is the reverse to the hipper. It seems like he's using this one as a part of his Z-guard game. Especially the time opponent doesn't like to put any on the mouth, like I showed in the previous chapter. So this one. As he's using the reverse to the hipper, that's going to be much easier to control the knee. Then there's been more space to play this position. That's a third option. Let's just understand of how he deals with the pressure passes in his guard. That will be one of the common situations he should be facing. Then he can easily, seems like he can easily handle it. So this situation, the time he does the movement, seems like he doesn't use like open Z guard. This one is more like offensive side. Against the pressure pass, he's more like using a shin or knee against lower body like this way. In order for him to make it tight, he even connects his feet like this, this type of style, like this. Then maybe most of the time, like jujitsu guys, nogi jujitsu guys, really like to come to the upper body pressure pass, like making an upper body cross face and under something like this. So against the movement, Craig, he just uses arms. Like this is like a Greek Roman style, using the hands. Then he really wants to avoid to get cross face. That's why he really takes care of this one with the hands like this. He doesn't compromise that. This seems like the first priority he wants to take care of it. Even though there's been more pressure from the opponent, like put the pressure, he doesn't like to get cross face. That's why he even use both of his hands like this or blocking like this. Then it's gonna be much easier to deal with the pressure. Then once he blocks the pressure, he's be able to switch to the counter-attack, especially that's for the upper body. Maybe in the last ADCC, he set up a Uregatane straight armbar in the first like 20 seconds in a match. So this is a typical situation. His opponent like came to the upper body pressure pass, Craig stopped completely, and then he just set up the frame like this. He does this one a lot, and Ziggur like this. And most of the time he wants to use this one for like her leg exposure, but if it works well, he switches to straight arm lock, like Udegatame, just trapping it, then set up the straight arm lock to finish. Then other option, choi bar. During this sequence, opponent wants to hide the arm, but in this situation, it could be difficult to pull out. That's why they want to turn the arm down, like Kimura shape, like this. So once that happens, so the Gable against the arm like this. It's gonna be easy to deal with it. Then from this position, Craig opens the leg like this. Then start getting an inversion to set up. Reverse arm bar like this. Some people call it choi bar. This is one of the common counter attacks against the pressure pass. But on the other hand, in this situation, if he feels really uncomfortable, he usually escapes to the close guard. Especially this situation, when opponents overcommit to put the pressure against the upper body, like this, yeah, it's getting closer to chest on chest, but on the other hand, I will see around our lower body, there's been more space. So, Craig can easily pull the leg on bottom, then he gets back to the close guard. I've seen a lot of this movement against kind of like overcommitted pressure pass. Then the similar situation here, opponent comes forward, but 
Seems like he doesn't overcommit to the match. Then Craig can easily deal with it. So in that case, he switched to the triangle choke. That would be one of favorite submissions from this position, I think. So in that case, they're blocking the biceps, cupping the armpit, then similar to the last movement, going back to the close guard. So all it needs to be is this, just a point of leg, more than usual. Once it goes, it's gotta be triangle like this. That's what he loves as well. Okay, the next one is about like attacking a person's lower body, more like leg attacks. So, opponent doesn't come to pressure pass like this. And then, Craig finds more space between him and his opponent like this. And then from this position, like stands outside attack, our far side leg. So, cupping the armpit. This is also the same as defending the neck. Then this goes under. Since using the top leg and other arm like this, there's been a frame against the upper body. Then, Craig is gonna be really easy to get upside down, like this. And once it's down, this is gonna be similar to a singular X. He starts swinging the leg in, like that. Then after that, he's gonna make a new ripping, expose the heel, then he does heel hurt. Then next one is a half butterfly. That'll be one of the most offensive positions in Z guard. So here, like, find a space between his upper body and opponent's upper body. In that case, he switched the butterfly like this. Then the time he does this movement, he much prefers to control a person's leg from outside like this. That's gonna be much easier to send an opponent to the other side, something like this. So here, then elevating like this. Then after that, depends on the opponent's reaction. If there's been space underneath the legs, he can easily go underneath like this. Then. It's gonna be the same as the last one. Legs being completely isolated. Then he can set up for what he loves to do from this position. Saddle. That's also his favorite position as well. So here in this position, since his opponent doesn't like to get caught in a singular X or some of the leg entanglements, more like stay in this position. So now Craig is gonna be upside down. By the time he goes upside down, this leg is gonna go out. Then I want to see the situation. This is a saddle keeping the butterfly hook in the middle, other one comes around here. Then it's about trapping a tie from outside. Then it's kind of pretty easy. Just smash it down to the floor to set up. Sometimes he gets even upside down completely. Then he's gonna go underneath to set up the hair hook. Right, that's been it. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, Please leave a like button. Leave any comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done it yet. Thank you guys. I'll you guys catch you in the next video. Bye.